So hello, and thank you for being with us today. My name is Tracy Ostrom, and I'm the president of the Swedish Medical Center Foundation. I'm here today to thank you for your extraordinary support of Swedish, and I want to thank each and every one of you for the incredible health care that you make possible for our community. Swedish is a not-for-profit and philanthropy is critical to serve our community and to help meet healthcare needs across the region. So you might be wondering why we've gathered you all here today, and we're so excited that you trusted us um, with your time this morning. We're here today to talk about the future of cancer care and treatment at Swedish. This is such an exciting time, and we are thrilled to share important news with you, our most dedicated supporters. And with that, it's my pleasure to introduce Mona Locke, our Chief Communications Officer, who will introduce our colleagues and share more about our ambitious new research program. Thank you, Tracy, and good morning, everyone. As Tracy mentioned, um, I'm Mona Locke, I'm the Chief Communication Officer here at Swedish. A few housekeeping uh, items before we get started. So we do have everyone on mute today for this event. And we have built in time at the end of the remarks to answer any questions you may have. So please feel free to chat them in at any point in the Q&A chat box. Today we have Swedish CEO, Dr. Guy Hudson, along with Dr. Sarah Jo Grefline, our Executive Medical Director of the Swedish Cancer Institute. Dr. Hudson will share some remarks, then Dr. Grefline. Again, we will be sure to save time for the Q&A at the end. And as our most dedicated supporters, we're sharing this news with you before anyone else. With that said, we do have a hard stop at 10 a.m. as we prepare to share what we're about to tell you with our friends in the media. So Dr. Hudson, I'd love to turn it over to you at this time. Great, thanks, Mona. And welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Dr. Guy Hudson, and I'm the CEO of Swedish. For nearly nine decades, the Swedish Cancer Institute has been putting new tools and technologies in the hands of our physicians and researchers to advance patient care and research and improve the lives of our patients. Today, I am honored to tell you that thanks to a $20 million personal bequest from the late philanthropist Paul G. Allen, co-founder of Microsoft, we will continue to build on our legacy of providing outstanding cancer care and treatment to our patients. Swedish was honored to care for Mr. Allen and has used his personal bequest to establish the Paul G. Allen Research Center at the Swedish Cancer Institute. Philanthropy and gifts like Mr. Allen's allow us to make transformational advancements in patient care. As a surgeon uh, and physician myself, the trust we have with our patients is the most important thing. And for Mr. Allen to put his trust in us for his care means a lot to our organization. And now with this gift, we will be able to serve and honor his legacy by helping not only those in the Puget Sound region, but all cancer patients and communities everywhere. And on that note, I'd like to turn it over to Dr. Sarah Jo Grefline of the Cancer Institute. Thank you, Dr. Hudson. Um, I'm Sarah Jo Grefline, and I am the Executive Medical Director for the Swedish Cancer Institute. It's a true honor to be here today to share some more about this personal bequest from Mr. Allen and what it's making possible through the Paul G. Allen Research Center at the Swedish Cancer Institute. First and foremost, this gift is allowing us to accelerate the scientific progress that we would otherwise be making by combining advances in biomedical science with innovations in cancer treatment, technology, and computer science, a fitting tribute to Mr. Allen. We will accomplish this work through three key pillars of focus. The first is called IMJEC, the Initiative for Molecular and Genomic Evaluation of Cancer. This will build on Swedish's long heritage of research in genomics in breast cancer and will allow us to explore and study the genomic behavior of cancer and the genetic evolution from a precancerous state until a malignancy. And 
find out what drives the evolution at the cellular level and at the genomic level, hoping that that will help us find ways to intervene early on. We're building on the work of the leader of this pillar, Dr. Hank Kaplan, well known in our community for the care he's provided and the scientific discoveries he's helped us reach. And he will be um, extending this work, not only within breast cancer, but to other malignancies as well. This is building on our expertise through the largesse of this gift. Um, in three weeks, Dr. Kaplan will be presenting some of the foundational work that the Paul G. Allen Research Center will build upon. He'll be presenting that work at the San Antonio Breast Cancer Conference, representing the Swedish Cancer Institute at the national and international level. We hope this will lead to improved and quicker access to the latest and greatest individualized treatments for our patients. The second key pillar is the CIO, the Center for Immuno-Oncology. This is being led by Dr. Kelly Paulson, who is building on the foundational work by Dr. John Cagle. Having the two of them partnered together to build this immuno-oncology approach in which we harness the power of the immune system to fight cancer is really a wonderful partnership. Hematologic malignancies, Dr. Pagel's expertise, are being treated with cellular immunotherapy. When we take the cells of a patient's body and train them to fight the patient's cancer for them. Humoral or non-cellular based immuno-oncology is giving a medication that unlocks and unleashes the immune system to fight a patient's cancer. And that's being used now in more solid tumors by the two teams of experts coming together and working in the Center for Immuno-Oncology, the opportunity to cross-fertilize ideas and to help bring both of these tools to bear on cancer is truly extraordinary. Our goal with the Center for Immuno-Oncology is to both create new clinical trials to push the boundaries of what's currently happening to find better and safer answers, and importantly, to gain an understanding through the detailed study of an individual patient's tumor at the genomic level of why these treatments work in some patients and don't work in others. The third pillar is headed up by Dr. Charles Drescher, and that is the Initiative for Cancer Prevention and Early Detection, or IPED. And this work will be helping us push and develop new early detection methods for a range of malignancies and hope to identify ways to prevent cancers. There are a few strategies out there now that are effective in um, preventing cancers from forming, and we help to build on that and identify more interventions. You can see that these three areas all intervene together around data and around genomics. And so another focus of the Paul G. Allen gift is the foundation of our core lab that will allow us to manage patient specimens well and get the data that we need, and then our informatics center, which will use the power of computing and data science to analyze this range of information. So it's a very, very exciting time at the Swedish Cancer Institute, and we are extraordinarily grateful to Mr. Allen for his support in founding the center and allowing us to advance patient care. While we're doing this work, we are going to also be paying a lot of attention to the impact on communities of color and other underrepresented in medicine populations to make sure that we are exploring, getting this research, getting these new initiatives, getting these new therapies we hope to develop to all of our communities. So a focus of attention will be recruiting more BIPOC and other underrepresented populations into our clinical trials, into our early screening and detection. So we're very excited about this and very grateful to Mr. Allen and his family for allowing Swedish to carry his legacy forward. Thank you so much, Dr. Griffline, and also Dr. Hudson for your remarks. Um, it's pretty exciting news for us here at Swedish today. Uh, we'd like to take the rest of the time really to shift to questions and answers, um, and answering any questions you may have. So please, again, feel free to chat them into the Q&A box. 
uh, I'd like to ask the first question really is, how will this gift and this uh, Cancer Institute, this new Paul Allen part of it, how will it help cancer patients more than what is already being done? So I would say, thank you for the question, that this will accelerate the pace of change and help us bring new and exciting clinical trials to bear. The Swedish Cancer Institute right now is very active in clinical research, and we are providing first in human clinical trials in some disease states, so the first patients who are getting a new therapy. What we hope and plan to do with this gift is to expand how many disease states that is happening in, how many clinical trials we have available, and as mentioned earlier, make sure that we are sharing those opportunities across all of our communities and not just to a limited spectrum. So being able to reach out to our communities of color and underserved populations to get them involved in clinical research as well is one of the things this, this tremendous gift will allow us to do. Perfect, thank you so much. Um, and why should, question two, why should a patient choose Swedish when there are so many premier cancer centers in the region? Dr. Hudson? Uh, thanks, Mona. Just going off mute there for a second. Well, you know, it, it's I, if uh, Mr. Paul G. Allen can can trust us with his cancer care, I, I think everyone can trust us with their cancer care. Um, you know, as an innovate an innovator, a philanthropist, someone who's asking the why and the why not with with everything that he's encountered uh, in the journey with cancer. Uh, it's one of the, the the few things that we've seen where we really try to put things. Uh, with diagnosis of cancer and, and put ourselves out of business, so to speak, because it is the most common cause of death in the United States. It is one of the more focused uh, topics in regards to care and research. And Swedish, with its long legacy, is one of the most respected cancer care and research centers in the region with a brand that's been around nine decades and known nationally. Uh, people choose us for our unique approach to care, which considers you or, or a personalized approach your lifestyle, your quality of life goals when recommending a treatment plan. And as, as Dr. Grethlein mentioned, our access to literally hundreds of clinical research trials, not only leading some of those, but the participation and the importance of data and outcomes, this allows us to exemplify that and move forward uh, very quickly in some spaces uh, and continue to be one of the leading centers in the Pacific Northwest, if not nationally. Well, thank you. So. Here's a question. Is the Paul G. Allen uh, Cancer Research Center a, a clinic and a, or an actual physical destination for patients? For the most part, no. There are some physical assets that we'll be building, building as part of the Paul G. Allen Research Center. Our core laboratory is a physical location and a wet lab that will allow us to manage patient specimens very well. Ultimately, we will be having the Center for Immuno-Oncology Clinic where we will be seeing patients and uh, providing clinical trials. But mostly, this is about bringing researchers together and bringing data together with clinical information to find new ideas and answer new questions. And that isn't done in a physical place. Understood. And so one question is, what is the timing of rolling this out? And how is this plan to happen exactly? So we have built a, a very robust infrastructure for the governance of the Paul G. Allen Research Center. It's critical that we are great stewards of this gift and that we spend the money in directions that make scientific sense, that are going to be able to get us to the right answers and that we are matching our capacity to the right questions. So as part of that, we are incorporating external scientific reviews and multiple layers of review before launching each of the projects, again, to make sure we steward these resources well. Those first round of trial of projects are currently under external review, and we hope to be launching them as soon as the reviews come back and meet our high standards. And we are starting to search for the informatics scientists and the other researchers who will populate the informatics center and help us move this work forward. So it's a really exciting time. The work is underway and I can't wait to see what, what we develop. There's a lot of work that has to happen. Obviously we're on the front end of this exciting um, adventure and 
real, really, I think, a different way to treat our cancer patients in the region. Um, so when we're talking about health equity, as you discussed, and, and reaching these vulnerable populations, how does the treatment compare in cost um, to other cancer centers? Well, I think that the treatment costs for cancer care are challenging, and it revolves around um, what your insurance coverage is, what the complexity of your therapy is. So there isn't a straightforward and simple answer to that. But I will share that our commitment to our patients includes having a great team of patient financial analysts who advocate on behalf of patients to make sure that we minimize the financial toxicity of their treatments. And one of the great things about clinical trials is that we analyze the cost to patients and make sure that we are managing any costs over the standard of care for patients to avoid burdening them with the costs of participating in research. Yeah, and just quickly, Dr. Grethlein, I, that is spot on. We, several things. One is, is we don't turn anybody away from care at, at, at Swedish, and we take care of everybody regardless of their ability to pay and can help them through their journey, uh, whatever that may be with their healthcare needs. And I, you know, a, a special shout out to a lot of specific things within the Swedish Foundation that are put in place to help patients along their cancer journey. Uh, and that's just one of the institutes that, of course, that we support uh, to help those in need. Uh, and this is where, in regards to, to health equity, I mean, cancer uh, affects everyone. And we are there and here to support everyone. We are continually working to lower our cost of care across uh, the continuum of health care. Uh, but as uh, I think a lot of you have seen, especially in the last uh, 18 to 20 months with COVID, things are very, very challenging. Uh, health care is a, uh, very much a focus of where we are and what we're doing in regards to the advancements that we're making. And, and cancer is no exception to that. But again, we wanna make healthcare affordable and we are striving to do that every day with not only the way we do our work, but our partnerships and the outstanding philanthropic uh, gifts that we've received, uh, especially uh, that are notable today. So I, it's just, a, again, a special thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hudson, for those remarks. And also I'm wondering, Many of the people on the call, you're very special and close to us because you have been donors, we have treated you. Wondering how can people get more involved in philanthropy? That's Swedish. Do you, I'll take that, Mona. Um, <laughs> if someone's interested in supporting this, I mean, one of the, the inspirations for the gift is for us to attract additional philanthropy to Swedish and to further um, our research aspirations and, and patient care aspirations. So if somebody's interested in learning more about this, by all, by all means, reach out to the foundation. And you know, we'd be delighted to have a conversation and bring you in and tell you more about you know, what's next for us as we move forward with this, this bold vision. So I'll add to that a little bit, and that is, that this is an incredible gift. And we want to use this as the foundation to build on additionally. We want to compete for grants from outside agencies and the government and use the research that we perform under the Paul G. Allen Research Center. When you apply for grants, you have to have data in order for them to know that you're serious and you know what you're doing. So we will do the research that is important in its own right but it will also give us data to compete for other grants and to continue growing on this, on this area um, and bringing in additional funds, either through philanthropy for which we are grateful or through grants that we're able to compete for using this research as a foundation. So when I describe this as an accelerant, that's what I meant. It not only accelerates the pace of research here now today that we can do with this grant, with this gift, but it also accelerates our opportunities to gather more funding moving forward. It's wonderful, Dr. Grethlein, Dr. Hudson, Tracy, thank you for joining us today for this announcement. I wanna ask if there's any last words or anything you wanna impart with us. I'll just share that I think it's really lovely that a man who spent his life managing data and helping the world manage data through Microsoft is helping us partner in taking biomedical data 
and the latest cutting edge data and patient data from electronic medical records and partnering that together to change the future. It's just a lovely legacy and we're honored to, to have it here. Perfect. I, I just like to, as we head into year end, just like to thank everyone for their support of the Swedish Foundation. Um, I know we have Board of Trustees members and Board of Governors here today. So just, just a huge thank you to everybody um, for prioritizing health in their philanthropy. Okay. And I just really want to thank everyone who has joined us today for taking the time to tune in um, as generous supporters. As we've mentioned already, we absolutely rely on your partnership and your continued philanthropic investment in Swedish. Our partners at the foundation have the latest information and will be in touch soon to share more updates on this exciting project. So with that, we'll sign off, wishing you all good health and a great day. Thanks again for joining us.